right, and welcome. Uh, we have a very, very special guest today, uh, someone who really epitomizes Beyond Vaudeville, has been with Beyond Vaudeville since the very beginning. And I just want to uh, give a, a couple of words of introduction on this very special guest. Um, she's best known as an interpretive dancer. She's won numerous trophies and awards over the years for her work as an interpretive dancer. She's really a cosplay pioneer. When she started this, there really wasn't a big cosplay world. And, and she really was one of the pioneers. She also, uh, she started performing publicly as Dracula in 1976. And the character that we've come to know her perhaps best for, um, Underdog, uh, she started her very first uh, performance publicly was July 27th, 1980 at a creation science fiction convention. She had um, done some of the uh, underdog dances when she was younger, but that was her first public performance was 1980. Um, since then, she has performed as other characters, some known like Supergirl and Catwoman, some uh, that she has created like Spectrum the Ghost King, Shelley the Mermaid, Irish Cinderella, She's invented uh, several uh, specialty dances and uh, exercise moves, including figure jogging, spotlight, spacewalking, balancercise, fly leaping. She's an accomplished singer. We're going to see some of that. She uh, is a very accomplished uh, seamstress. She does all of her original costumes. Some of them are actually in uh, museums now. And uh, she's a great uh, cake decorator as well. Um, so, Without further ado, I'm going to introduce this person who, again, is very special to us here at Beyond Vaudeville. Please welcome Ms. Suzanne Muldowney. Hello, Suzanne. Hello, Richard. And, and how are you? Uh, how are you feeling today? Uh, today is uh, April Fool's Day. Do you do anything special for April Fool's Day? I never do anything for the April Fool's theme because... Uh, because when I was younger, uh, my my contemporaries would use the April Fool's Day occasion as an excuse to be malicious and even destructive. Ah, okay. So, do you think April Fool's Day should just be banned? Maybe. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I know you you also take some issue with Santa Claus as well, right? The concept of Santa Claus. It's. It's wrong for for parents to uh, channel their children into believing uh, in a non-existent character. We we teach our children they mustn't lie, and yet we are dishonest as well as deceitful uh, about Santa's existence. We we tell our children uh, they mustn't lie, but but we but we tell them a bunch of lies um we also have to reinforce our lies by saying on christmas eve that uh, that santa comes only when the children are asleep we do not we say that he brings the presents but we do not allow the children to witness his arrival we uh, we tell our children um not to speak to strangers, yet we force them to sit in Santa's lap and confide in him when we when we also say, don't let strangers touch you. So in so, fostering Santa, the obvious way we are we are great, we are guilty of a great many inconsistencies. Okay. So uh, so maybe we need to eliminate April Fool's Day, eliminate uh, the concept of Santa, I, I tell you, I know Easter is just around the corner, and I'm guessing where you might stand on the Easter bunny, but maybe we have so much to get to that we probably should, you know, move on from the, the holidays. Um, uh, so, Suzanne, uh, Underdog originated 1964, right? So, Underdog was, for those that maybe younger viewers who might not know, Underdog was a cartoon uh, character. Um, uh, a superhero. Oh, a superhero, excuse me. Um, and um, uh, but there was an alter ego, uh, Shoeshine Boy, who would 
uh, take a magical uh, pill and become a superhero known as underdog. Is that correct? Um, he did not take the pill to become strong the way Popeye has to take spinach to be strong only temporarily. The pill that underdog used was only a recharger uh, to recharge his batteries, so to speak, after strenuous missions. Got that. Okay. Was that a prescription that he took? that he had for that or? Well, you, you'd you imagine that um, the chemical formula for the pill was approved by the FDA. Okay, that, that but that was never covered in the uh, animated series that, that's no. specific. Okay, is it, it's presumed that there was uh, some caffeine in this or amphetamine or how? Or well, 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 those are well, those were uh, snide remarks and uh, malicious rumors. Got it, okay. Um, all right. And I, uh, by the way, um, uh, Suzanne, we do have lots of people that are, are watching now and they're starting to put comments in and, and hopefully we'll get to your comments uh, uh, later, people. So just keep uh, keep them coming. And uh, but it, everyone is just sounds so supportive of, of Suzanne and, and so appreciative that you're doing this with us today, Suzanne. Um, I, so maybe if you can just explain um, what got you started with this. So underdog had some programmatic flaws right and and could you just explain really in in a sentence or two what what the key issues were with the series um the the stories uh the characters spoke bespoke very simplistically the way uh batman and robin did in the live uh, tv series they sounded like, they sounded like kindergartners instead of uh, um, mature adults or teenagers or whatever their ages were. Um, the, the plots were very poor. Uh, Underdog was too easily entrapped by the adversaries. Um, like Simon Bar Sinister, one of his arch nemeses. Yes. Yeah. And, and so Suzanne, so you felt that through interpretive dance, you could help correct the image is, is that correct i took up i took up ballet dancing first because um a dennis the menace comic book showed margaret the prudish girl neighbor uh demonstrating some ballet steps which made her look phenomenal so that uh, apparently um dance lessons and dance techniques were the best way to simulate underdogs flying within mortal limitations. Got it. Okay. So, so you were inspired in part by Margaret from the Dennis the Menace cartoon to, to dance. No, no not, not Margaret. It, it, um, um, some boyfriend of Dennis's could very well have taken ballet lessons. I was intrigued by the the motions that that made her that made that made her look of superhuman. Got it. Okay. And um, uh, Suzanne, your image is uh, jumping a little bit. Is it um, um, uh, maybe? Uh, I, I don't know if you could just put your phone on a you know somewhere steady. Uh, where uh, my 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 hands shake a bit. Oh, um, you're you're holding one, it in your one hand. Of, one of my older. One of my older friends, uh, as he got older, said um, when he wrote letters, his hands shook a lot. So it's probably uh, it's probably part of the aging process. Got it. OK. And um, and now you're actually wearing one of your underdog capes today, um, it looks like, and, and, and an underdog uh, uniform as well. Um, no, I'm not wearing the underdog suit. I have a red blouse on, but it doesn't have the white letter U on it. Ah, okay. But it's a close facsimile. Yes. Okay. Um, so, and, and Suzanne, just be, before we uh, get off the, the topic, uh, and we are going to show some clips of, of your appearances that you did with us. Uh, there's just so much to get uh, to with you. But um, uh, I'm just curious on some other uh, classic uh, cartoon dogs um how if you felt their images were should have been corrected like muttley the dog um any thoughts on muttley um he was supposed to be just a a, a run-of-the-mill dog uh, he was owned by uh, uh dick dastardly who was a, a villain at heart right 
but but do you feel that he was too submissive to Dick Dastardly? Um, was he too cowardly? Uh, uh, no. Um, in in a spinoff show in which um, Dick Dastardly, Muttley, and two other aviators were part of a World War One flying skull, uh, squadron. Um, Muttley was always anxious to perform heroic missions so that he'd win medals. Hmm. Okay. So, and uh, and then how about um, how about Goofy, Goofy the dog? Do you think his image should have been corrected over the years? Um, he should have he should have wised up uh, and uh, realized that. Uh, his uh, bad habits led to uh, equally bad results. And then when he had the son of uh, uh, Tex, Rex, um, the, 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 the son was just as goofy as the father. And that was a, um, a, a bad example, um, um, a bad seed, you might say. Yeah, well, and, and that's the thing. I mean, Goofy might have just been mentally challenged, might not have been capable of, of you know, changing but uh so uh, how about uh so uh we we do have some questions uh sean riggle um is asking what about hong kong fooey do you think he was properly portrayed no no okay uh and artificial banana is asking about huckleberry hound well well he was more sensible thing is he uh, he always talked with a uh, um uh, a southern drawl hmm. so so it, it seems like you were okay with huckleberry hound that he was you know well i never uh, i never tried to emulate him uh, these these characters uh, were naming i would watch just for enjoyment but uh, but when it came to underdog and i saw that story about uh, dancing lessons. I figured uh, if I'm going to do uh, underdog, I've got I've got to become a trained dancer. Got it. Okay. Um, Pennsylvania Pinchington's asking about Magilla Gorilla. Well, that's that's just silly, um, Pennsylvania, because we're we're talking about dogs here, not uh, not simians. Correct, Suzanne. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Um, Suzanne, actually, and I I do want to ask you about that because we had a dancing monkey on. Beyond Vaudeville uh, and Oddville, uh, Joey the Dancing Monkey, and you did have some issues with the portrayal of Joey the Dancing Monkey, right? That his his movements weren't properly Simeon like, or um, uh, uh, yes, um, uh, he was supposed. Well, if he was supposed to be, I think it was so. He was he was supposed to be much. He was so much bigger than a monkey. Are you sure he wasn't uh, supposed to be a gorilla? Oh, that's a good point. So that so actually calling him Joey the monkey was a misnomer, uh, on, as far as you're um, concerned. Uh, he he walked too human like. I had to show him uh, the way that real simians move, so that uh, his walk and his other moves would be more authentic. Got it. Okay. And uh, so now, um, so this is a um, a big year. Uh, coming up for Underdog, originated in 1964, and it's the 60th anniversary. And I know you're very big on anniversaries. Uh, what do you have planned for the 60th anniversary? I hope to appear in the events in which I'm a regular, but I but I also want to appear in some uh, additional events. I'm I'm making a whole new costume uh, for the occasion, the same way I made new costumes for other milestone anniversary years. Um, the the symbol of a 60th anniversary is diamonds. So I'm uh, I'll, I'll be making a new uh, suit. I'm making a new uh, cape, and and they'll be decked out abundantly in uh, so on diamonds. Oh, wow. That will be uh, very sparkly, I would imagine. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, there's another comment. Uh, um, let's see. I, it's coming from uh, uh, Branko Bear and Artificial Banana are having a little debate about uh, Dino the dinosaur. I, I, I'm sorry to keep dwelling on the dog. Dino technically wasn't a dog, but I. Uh, but how did you feel about that character, the Dino character on the Flintstones? Um. 
uh, he made more sense because uh, uh, because he stayed uh, he stayed an animal. He didn't try to uh, um, humanize himself. Mm. Okay, so he Dino knew his place. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And and I guess as I guess you would say that about Astro too from the Jetsons that he 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 knew his place. Well, well, not quite. Um, uh, he talked, mm. but he had um, he had some sort of speech impediment, right? Like he couldn't properly pronounce his words. Um, well, that's probably um, the actor um, distorting his voice so that it sounded more canine. Ah, uh, okay, gotcha. Like if a do- yeah, if a, if a dog, if a real dog were saying. Astro, it, it might come out rastro. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, uh, you know, so Suzanne, I mentioned at the, at the top about cosplay and the rise of, of furries and, you know, uh, uh, you know, we're seeing, um, you know, prime time shows with people dressed in costumes. Does this surprise you? Do you feel like you have anything to do with this rise in in interest in people dressing up in in costumes? Well, I don't un- I don't understand just when and where uh, are these people dressing in costumes? Right. Well, you know, on TV what we have is. on TV we have the masked singer, and there are actually now cosplay conventions entire conventions, because when you were uh, starting out, you were doing costumes in broader science fiction conventions where they would have like a costume show. But now there are their entire conventions and conferences where people gather just to dress up in characters and, and dress as animals. And um, Do you think you might have had a I, role I in there, some I of hope, that? I hope people dressing up as as outlandishly as they can uh, don't lose the purpose of uh, simply trying to interact with people and having a good time they don't want to show themselves off so that they so that they make fools of themselves gotcha okay well let's let's hope not um so so Suzanne let's talk about um uh, how we got to know one another and and you know it's 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 so much fun to be doing this with you on zoom I was looking through my files on you and I, I found when you used to send me uh, telegrams, you know, I mean, we've really come a long way uh, uh, technically. But um, we first uh, met in 1986, and you were doing um, one of our the first of what would eventually be ten of our live shows, um, and it was with uh, Danny Bonaducci. Um, and um, that, uh, that wasn't uh, that one was not the uh, very first Beyond Boardville performance. I'm pretty sure it was the at least the fourth. Uh, co- correct. But it was the first one that you appeared at. Yes. 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 And uh, and then in 1987, we also did a live show with uh, Grandpa Munster, Al Lewis. Um, and um, and I want to show uh, some of your performance from that. I don't know if you've even seen this. Um, have, have you ever seen this footage? I'm pretty sure I have. Oh, OK. Well, let's take a look at a little bit of it and then we'll uh, we'll talk about that. We'll now see the authentic Vlad Dracula, the Impala, as he fights his last battle, dies, and makes the monumental transition from prince to vampire. Here now is Susan Muldowney, Princess Dracula.
that's enough. Spectacular. Now, so now, Suzanne, now this other clip, this was later in the show. We had uh, a comedy team and they ended up doing a Dracula performance. And um, and then we'll talk about this, but I'll just show a clip. It was just coincidental that they were doing their own comedy bit. Good evening, Mr. Dracula. Thank you very much, but you can call me Count. Blah. Yes, Count. Listen, it's, it's an honor to have you here because, uh, you know, we hear a lot about Dracula from the movies and from the books and from television. But why don't you take this opportunity and tell this enthusiastic crowd what? what you're really like? Not at all. The villain they portray me to be in the movie. What? Right. Oh, you're not, you mean uh, you don't go around biting people in the neck? Certainly not. All that blood is back in my throat. I am a singer. La, 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 la. Oh, isn't that interesting? You see, you call a We did our act. Uh, Semi-good, you know? It was an experiment. We tried something different. But backstage, now what we did was a Dracula bit. Tell them what happened. Well, what we did was a Dracula bit, and I'm going to tell you what happened. See, there was another performer in the show who did a very serious version of Count Dracula. Oh, no, no laughing matter. The way he really was. Anyway, to get to the point, we get off stage after doing our comical version of Count Dracula. And she tries to attack him. She was offended, and she slapped me on the wrist. And tried to put a stake through his heart. But I told her I liked it medium rare, and she took the stake away. Adam, so nobody got hurt, so... Everything is... all right. Let's shake on it. Ah. Uh, so that was the comedy team of Book and Martino. And so, Suzanne, so they had said that um, that you were so mad when you saw them doing that performance that you actually came and, and gave them a little slap. Was that true? Um, well, in the first place, with, with, with my clip, I think you showed a little too much of it. Once I had turned to the vampire, that was enough. Um, I, I recognized the moment as the uh, time that I was making the uh, metamorphosis. Correct. Um, now, Correct. as far as these comedians went, I had gone to a lot of effort to be uh, frightening. Um, uh, 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 you know, teeth chattering, uh, um, cold hands, uh, terrifying. And, and, these, and these two men had just undermined uh, all the effort I went to. So, um, so when they went backstage, I did go um, with a with with my stake, and uh, and I pointed it at them, uh, 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 bawling them out for uh, for for undoing all my serious efforts. Huh? okay. And and how? Uh, wow. And how how did you get along with uh, Al Lewis, Grandpa Al Lewis? Any memories of him? I I wanted to have a conversation um, with him, but uh, but but he was too withdrawn. Oh, okay. He refused. He refused to interact. Got it. Um, but uh, I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to see how did he feel since um, he had portrayed a vampire in the monsters. What did he think of uh, of Dracula being presented through dance? But uh, um, did he go for it at all? But uh, but but he refused to speak. He, he didn't have much time for that. So um, now, how about uh, you? You also did one of our live shows with Adam West, uh, Batman, who you mentioned earlier, um, uh, and you did Supergirl that year. Uh, how did uh, how did you two get along, you and uh, and Adam West? 
oh, uh, we, we, I, I exchanged a, a greeting, uh, Batman meets Supergirl when I was ready to exit. He was, he was much more courteous. Oh, good, good. Okay. And, um, and there were so many, uh, um, stars that you got to work with on those live shows. Um, Peter Tork from the Monkees, Little Mike Anderson uh, from Twin Peaks, Ron Palillo, Horshack, Barbara Feldon, Agent 99, Pat Cooper, the comedian. As you hear those names, any uh, any story jump to mind about any of them in particular? Um, no. Okay, fair enough. Um, so, um, so you also so the same year that you you joined us for our first live show was the same year that we were starting our our TV program Beyond Vaudeville, and you were on our first episode with uh, Mason Reese, and you were uh, fantastic and, and appearing as Underdog and explaining to everyone about Underdog. Um, and the next time you came back, um, uh, actually, David Green was hosting the show. And um, and we have a clip of that that we'll show. Um, and then we can talk about that and, and what that experience was like. How much time? Suzanne? Uh, Can you hear me? Could I ask you, Suzanne? Uh, and I would like to point out, this is a Frank Hope guest. Got it? For our folks at home, got it? Uh, what modus operandi do you use in impersonating underdog? Uh, improvisational dance. Um, I also treat underdog as more a meritorious than a tongue-in-cheek hero, the way he was unfortunately made to be in the old days. What did you think of Phoebe? Um, I thought she, I thought she was, a, um, The truth. I thought she did an excellent performance, but that... <laughs> yeah, right. You had your turn. Wow. So that, uh, David was referencing, uh, Phoebe Legere, who had been on earlier, and that was her yelling when you were about to, to just comment on her performance. Um, any memory of that experience? She overstayed her welcome. I'm, I mean, uh, her, uh, screaming after she had had her turn and uh, um, butting in any time she felt like it. Got it. Um, uh, Suzanne, by the way, in the comments, uh, remote viewer 1006 is saying, we are so lucky to see this. Please make sure Suzanne knows how much we appreciate her and wish her all the best. Um, and lots of positive comments coming through. And, I, you know, I do have a question for you, Suzanne, because I know, you know, going way back to when when I first got to know you uh, and you were working to improve the image of of underdog. And um, and I'm really curious if you feel like you've accomplished this uh, task and all these years later, it, it seems like you have there's a, there's a, a lot of awareness of your work and what you do. And, and a lot of people are very appreciative of you. Do you feel like this has all been worthwhile and you've you've had some success in what you set out to do? Um I I didn't feel that that I had accomplished a lot. Well, anytime, anytime the underdog cartoon TV series was rerun, they showed just the uh, original episodes with the with you know with all their uh, aforementioned drawbacks and then I think it was I think it was in 2007 that there was this uh, live uh, underdog movie a feature length movie and it, it was just absolutely ghastly hmm. Hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, something tells me that uh, those people uh, were unaware uh, of me because I remember uh, when I was struggling to make myself known as uh, as a meritorious uh, underdog portrayal, I, I tried to contact the top authorities. The letters got sent back, or uh, or, or just um, I wrote to them. I never heard from them again. And time passed. I figured that uh, uh, no one had bothered to take my story seriously. 
Uh, so, so it might have been a very different story had you starred in the movie, the live action movie as underdog. You, you think it might have been more yeah, successful? I, I, wasn't, I wasn't in that movie at all. No, but if if you had been in the place of of underdog, um, uh, do you do you think that movie might have been a, a bigger success? Because I don't think it was very successful. Um, I couldn't be sure if the producers or the directors would let me have my own way in portrayal. They might uh, um, they might have forced me to um, mutilate uh, some of my uh, basic modus operandi so that uh, the end result would still have been uh, a bunch of garbage. Got it. Oh, wow. So I, so I never saw the movie, but uh, someone named uh, P.T. Spiders in the chat says that underdog movie, uh, pardon my language, he said that underdog movie sucked. Any thoughts on that? Um. Well, I don't quite understand when 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 something sucks, but at least he didn't use a, a profane word. Yeah, I guess that's maybe sort of a, a mildly profane word, you know. Um, yeah. So um, so let's show another uh, clip. This is this is from one of your many appearances on Beyond Vaudeville. And um, this will actually get into this idea of profane uh speech that they saw you on the uh, Stern show and I said I said no uh, no really I said to the uh, fans that it was uh, wrong because uh, like you said he's like the devil right uh, and you... I didn't know I had never heard of or seen his show before they asked me to be on it I did not know that he was such a vulgar uh, television host he, you might consider him the King Midas of smut so after having been on it I was so shocked and so maltreated Right. And you, but you're the one who got him off the air, right? I don't know. There may, I don't know if there was enough discontent over the years, however long he's been. I don't know if there was enough discontent before I came on. All I know is I just heard by word of mouth that his show was being canceled. If I did have anything to do with that decision, I have received no acknowledgement at all. I have not been given any kind of credit, let alone common commendation. So that was a reference for anyone watching it doesn't know the history on this. That was back in 1992. I guess, Suzanne, you had been invited to appear on the Howard Stern television program on WOR. And then it was uh, eventually uh, off the air, I don't know, within a year or whatever. And, um, and we were talking that about- That same year. That same year. And, and you might have had some involvement in that being canceled, or it's not clear. Well, well- well, that's just it. If I did have anything to do with it, I, I was given no official acknowledgement, let alone credit. And all these years later, um, I, I know you've talked a lot about about you know how you felt like you were maltreated there, and ha have you sorted things out with Howard Stern in, in the ensuing years? I have never been in his presence uh, since 1992. Hmm. But you've communicated with him? <sighs> I, um, I, I, wanted, I, I wanted to say without being on the air that, uh, that he had done me great harm, but, but they would put me on the air anyway, and, uh, and, and he and I would have an, an awful confrontation. Hmm. And uh, and by the way, someone is uh, writing in TNL Nick. I admire her guts for standing up to Satan in the den of iniquity. Wow. Well, that must have been the uh, the, the banquet episode that uh, that when I was first told about it, I said no, I will not be in it. But uh, but then. The woman in charge of booking the guests put me on hold. And when she came back, she said, everybody nominated for an award must be there. Wow. So you had no choice. Right. Got it. OK. How do you get along with the show's uh, producer, Gary Delabate? Um. 
Well, I guess um, he was okay, but uh, I know one time it was either he or Stutter and John that I asked questions about Howard when I, the, the, the first time I came to the studio and, uh, and we had not yet started uh, getting ready for the episode, I tried to ask them, what does he do? And, um, and they were very vague in, in answering. They didn't, they didn't give all the facts. But, but you did eventually develop a friendship there with uh, Shuley, Mr. Shuley, correct? I don't know. I don't know what's happened to him. Um, last year, around St. Patrick's Day, he was supposed to uh, put on a, a radio show with me. Uh, the day came and he just never called me. Um, oh. I tried to find out what what happened to him. I, uh, um, I called his number uh, a number of times, but uh, would get only instructions to leave messages and when i did he never called me back so i uh, and and time passed and he just seemed to have disappeared well ho hopefully uh hopefully you two will connect again and and uh it was just well, it's a, been a whole wire. year now oh wow okay how, how about um the uh howard stern's um uh partner robin quivers did you get along with her okay no Okay. Um, For one so thing, in the banquet episode, her gown exposed too much of her bust. Oh, did you, did you mention anything to her about that? Yes. And did so? Did did she did she acknowledge or did she feel that you? So you felt she wasn't being modest. Um, she just made a flippant remark and moved on. Okay. Well, hopefully, I, I hope that, uh, you know, all these years later, you can eventually sort things out. And and um, uh, do you, do, would you say that you would for, forgive Howard for Howard Stern for that experience or? No. No. I, Okay. Um, so, well, why don't we uh, keep, uh, we'll keep moving on and show some other clips. Um, so this is another clip from the show right around that same time. And this was with Tom. It's Arthur. completely back. And then the soldier, or rather the announcer, announces the next competitor representing all the planets, underdog. And there, boom, underdog steps into the spotlight. He's back. And does the soldier. Frank, can I, may I, uh, ma'am, and I, with all due respect, I would just like to ask a question about underdog, a little underdog trivia. I was at the Smithsonian. Have you ever been there and seen the, uh, they have underdogs penis uh, on display there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, okay. It's a diligent and an underdog. It's a, I know, I, I'm serious. I'm very sorry. Listen, I, uh, you know. Oh, boy. You've just succeeded in equaling yourself to another arch enemy. Oh. With a profane statement like that. Um, I apologize, uh, Ms. Muldowney. Uh, I, I okay. am sorry. I okay. really, uh, <laughs> All right. So in that case, Suzanne, were you comparing Tom Arnold to um, Howard Stern when, when you were saying he was like a, another arch enemy? Um, well, when the segment started, I, I recognized that I was um, explaining uh, a segment from my uh, big scale underdog story, interplanetary Olympic horror. Mm -hmm. um, but then, uh, but then that man ruined everything by um, joking about the Smithsonian having underdogs' private parts. That was that was uh, that 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 was that was bad taste and poor judgment on his part. But you seem to set him in his place very quickly after that. Yes. Yeah. Was, was there any further exchange after the taping or, or with him? Or do you remember anything like that? I, I, I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, 
so anyway, you so you did all these shows with us at Beyond Vaudeville, and you were always a favorite guest. You were on eight times, which was more, I think, than any other guest that ever appeared on on our Beyond Vaudeville TV show. Um, and then you came over with us when uh, we when we did Oddville MTV, and you were on that show three times. Um, and yes, I that. had some great experiences there. And um, you were on one show with um, Wild Orchid. Do you remember that? Um, well, I wasn't on simultaneously while they were performing, but I remember uh, being on an episode in which they too uh, participated. They said they were going to get in touch with me afterwards and, and they never did. Oh, they didn't. Okay. Uh, well, just like Mr. Shuley, I guess, um, I guess, some more crossed wires there, but, th but there's a picture of, um, uh, from, from when you were on, you, you had one of your great, uh, Vlad the Impeller, um, outfits that you had done yourself and, and you were right there with Wild Orchid, including Fergie, who eventually went on to Black Eyed Peas and, and, um, uh, so, so you, you never heard any follow-up from them. Um, but, uh, are you still open to talking to them if they, uh, if they were to reach out at this point? I wouldn't know where to find them. I'd have to know uh, from where are they communicating. How do I how do I find them? Would I would I be able to uh, reach the, um, the 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 location easily? Right. Okay. Um, and uh, now, and you were also Suzanne on our uh, very last episode of um, of Oddville, which was. Um, uh, a wedding, an actual wedding uh, with uh, Phil DeGene and and Cinnamon, and um, and you've actually stayed in touch with Phil all these years later, right? Yes, but there was one thing on that um, final episode that was that was that was absolutely criminal, and you better not rerun any footage of that. Uh. Well, uh, well, you mean your uh, during the the um, during the actual wedding ceremony? We we have footage of you um, singing. Um, oh no! Working together day by day. I think something that really surprised our viewers, no one knew you had this amazing voice, uh, Suzanne, and um, and people are just- but you played footage that I told you not to. You, um, you could see that I was, uh, uh, I was tensed up. Um, I was uh, nervous, worried uh, because, because that because that boob uh, among the guests pop exploded and popped a balloon uh, while, while I was performing. Oh, but but well, he had uh, yeah he had been on the show before because that that was his talent was that he was able to to you know inflate that on his head, um, and um, and you know it it um, so. On that particular show, we were having a lot of people back who had been on the show before who were, you know, and um, well, that was a bad choice for for that particular uh, show. It, it, you, you think it, we shouldn't have had him for the wedding? Absolutely not. OK, OK. Well, I mean, because we had another, you know, I, I know. Uh, we had Scott there who also would put uh, utensils up his nose. You know, he had that ability was i don't know if you remember him uh being there um but but people are writing in how much they uh they love your singing uh scott dog says uh she was fantastic singing toto Payne diaz says you have an angelic voice 
Um, uh, we're hearing beautiful, is it a uh, wonderful voice says Reed Transistor. Um, how, uh, how did you develop this skill, Suzanne, as a, as a singer? Um, I really didn't take uh, singing seriously until uh, uh, seventh grade because uh, um, I didn't know how to read music and uh, I didn't play any instruments. But uh, let me let me let me think. Yeah, um, when when I was in seventh grade, um, everyone in the entire middle section of my school uh, was in the glee club, whether or not they had any uh, singing talent. Uh, so uh, we would go over the different vocal parts and, uh, um, and, and I heard them reach the high notes. I, I figured I could do that too. And then uh, um, I got the idea of why not uh, try to uh, accompany some of the, uh, singing um well that i never did but at least uh, that way i learned how to read music and uh, i learned about the um, you know orchestral instruments and and different uh, uh vocal uh categories and and uh, suzanne i'm just looking back at some of the comments from earlier um uh, so this was again in the the uh, just a, a callback to when we were talking about dogs. Somebody was asking um, what your thoughts were on Droopy Dog. Um, I really didn't go for him at all. I didn't see him uh, that often. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and um, so uh, so then uh, Suzanne, um, a few years later, uh, after Oddville. Um, we got to meet again uh, when I, I had the good fortune of booking you on uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live. And um, I don't have that uh, video footage. I, I have to still find that footage. Um, I do have a still from that performance. And um, so you came out to Los Angeles and uh, you, uh, here's a picture of it right here. Uh, and you were part of the uh, Future Challenge Showcase, and you were there in your uh, one of your underdog uh, outfits, and you were uh, doing figure jogging, I believe, correct? Well, Richard, uh, Jimmy Kimmel wanted me to do uh, figure jogging. He was interested in it, but he requested that I uh, dress as an uh, underdog. Got it. Okay. And how did that performance go for you? Um. I, I guess it went rather well. Um, I, I, they didn't use a, a phonograph record of the uh, of the song Funky Town. They had a live band, and and they and they made it much shorter than the original number of actually was. Got it. Yes, uh, uh, Cleto and the Cletones did a, a live performance of that. That's correct. But but it was well received uh, by the by the studio audience, as I recall. Yes. Yeah. And um, and how did you get to interact much with uh, with Jimmy Kimmel? Da any thoughts on on Jimmy and, and what it was like uh, meeting him and and working with him? Um, well, I was thrilled to meet someone who was apparently um, interested in uh, um, in something I specialized in. Um, we we had a good interview afterwards, but then. Uh, um, but then after that, um, years later, I tried to appear on his show again, and, and, and he said uh, the format's quite different now than it was back then, so I never got to be on again. Ah, okay. Well, yes, the segment that you were appearing in uh, was no longer a part of the show, so maybe that was, you know, part of the, part of the issue. Um, but you... But you but you um, are hoping maybe one day to get on Jimmy Kimmel Live again? Um, some, some associate uh, of his talked with me a number of times about uh, what I might do. And every moment he, he said, well, suppose they don't allow this or allow that. Um, I was hoping to 
do an entire dance number, you know, in its entirety. But uh, but then people were criticizing me for trying to get uh, too much of a time slot on on national television, and 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 too many of my numbers just aren't meant uh, to be mutilated or or uh, shortened. Got it. Got it. And I know a lot of times when uh, we would have you on the show, um, you were very limited in your space and actually some of our live performances as well. I mean, ideally, you like a very large stage to to perform on, correct? Well, it depends. Uh, it depends on my topic and uh, um, uh, how, how I'm dressed, uh, how I have to present the topic. Mm -hmm. And um, and then Suzanne, we met again, and this is uh, this is actually uh, online. Uh, but in 2017, uh, we did a reunion show, a live reunion show in Philadelphia. The people at Philomoca were nice enough to uh, host us there, and uh, and you appeared with us. And um, how how was that experience? And 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 your experiences with Philomoca? You've done a few shows there, correct? Um. I, I think I did only uh, uh, one show there before the Beyond, the Beyond Vaudeville reunion. Um, uh, I, I, I was very embarrassed by uh, the chair that I was sitting in. I was trying to get up and I, I couldn't get up. I kept rocking back and forth. I, I, I thought, oh dear, this looks terrible. They'll, they'll never appreciate this. Ah, well, it was an impromptu set, yeah. Um, uh, so, and, and that was true of our TV show too. You know, often we had to just, you know, grab whatever furniture we could from the lobby and, and it was, uh, it was not always ideal, the, the furniture. Um, yeah, Suzanne, uh, one of our, uh, one of our people watching Scott Dog is asking, does Suzanne have a favorite rock band? Um, no, I don't. I go for, uh, I, I go for uh, easily listening or, or or classics. Oh, okay. And any um, easy listening artists that you that you like in particular? I didn't. Um, I didn't research the performers. Uh, if I found a song uh, that I liked, then then I would go. I would go for it, and and I would give credit where due uh, to the performers, but I did not plunge into uh, absorbing as much knowledge or trying to get acquainted with those performers. Got it. Okay. Um, Captain uh, Wackencracker says, I have a lock of Suzanne's hair, believe it or not. Wow. That's uh, that's special. Do, do many people have locks of your hair? Um, I was giving it out for a while. Anytime Anytime I had to cut my hair every few months, there was always uh, uh, somewhat of a crop. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but I don't do it anymore now. Got it. Okay. And uh, Brian Heater asks, was your experience with Beyond Vaudeville an overall positive one? Well, well, I, I hope this answer is right, but I'll cover my ears if you want to give an honest response. Did, did you have a, would you say you, you had... Good experiences, good memories of doing your Beyond Vaudeville appearances? Yes. Well, good. And you're not just saying that it's because I'm here. It's such a shame that, uh, that Beyond Vaudeville reunion in, in Mogo, uh, Mo, Mo, Moco. A Phila Moco. M-O-C-O, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a shame that I never, I never got to appear in another performance in that facility again, because there were some uh, city zoning problems and then later on the COVID uh, disaster. Right, right. Well, but but I guess that is going to, uh, they're, they're back up and running now. So hopefully you can do some more performances there. Well, I get a Christmas card from the, the, the curator and his wife, but, uh, but not once have they tried to, uh, get me another engagement. Oh, well, I, yes, I'm sure I, you're referencing Eric Bresler. I'm sure he'd love to have you back there. I, I'm, I'm sure. So hopefully that'll happen. Um, and Suzanne, uh, you, there's also a question. 
who is uh, who's a favorite celebrity that Suzanne has met or worked with? I guess is there anyone besides some of the people we talked about earlier? Um. Well, I'd say they were two of them, but they're not they're not performers. They're not performing artists. They're uh, they're historians. Oh, and who would that be? Uh, the two historians who rediscovered Dracula's real story, Radu Florescu and uh, Raymond McNally. Ah, OK. And uh, and and their research is associated with uh, Vlad the Impaler. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, OK. And um, so what about uh, what's coming up for you, Suzanne? I know you do a lot of uh, parades. You've mentioned on the show that you uh, you work the block party circuit. Um, um, I don't do block parties anymore because unless I'm a featured performer, um, the constantly drifting crowds uh, pay no attention to me. Ah, uh, OK. So, so what else is uh, anything uh, anything we should be on the lookout for coming up? Any parades or appearances? Um, on April fifteenth, I'm supposed to be in uh, Ocean City, New Jersey, for the Duda Parade. Ah, uh, okay. Which uh, I I know we uh, went to see you at one of the Duda parades years ago, and and um, somewhere we have some footage of that as well. And and in fact. I have um you were on the cover of one of the um one of the big newspapers down there. Oh yes, I remember that. Uh yeah. now that that doesn't come out in Ocean City. That comes some somewhere around Wildwood or so, because I recognize that photo as one taken of me in a Cape May Halloween parade. Ah, Cape May. Okay. It, it was a great picture. And uh, what a, um, you know, and again, that's the kind of thing I'm saying, Suzanne, it's like, you're, you're really so well known and, and so well liked that you were put on the cover of that newspaper. And, and um, so I, I, I feel like you have accomplished some of what you originally set out to do. Um, yes. Uh, there's a question. What are your favorite foods? My favorite foods. Um, yeah. Um, uh, roast chicken breast with rice and uh, and chicken gravy. Um, uh, steak sandwiches. And uh, uh, um, uh, frozen custard cones. Ah, okay. Great. Uh, any other snack foods that you that you like? There are a few, but uh, I I don't want to I don't want to list all of them. Okay. Have you ever tried flaming hot Cheetos? Oh, that that name uh, is enough to ward me off uh, without without tasting one. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Got it. Um, so, well, Suzanne, this has been uh, really um, uh, wonderful having you here and, and reminiscing and hearing uh, that, you know, what you still have coming up. Uh, it's, it's great that you are still pursuing all these things. Um, um, if anybody comes to see me in the dude operator on April 15th, um, my character priority for 2023 is Shelley, the South Jersey Shore mermaid, because uh, she was introduced on May 1st, 1993, which makes this year her 30th anniversary. Oh, wow. Another anniversary. Great. And um, and and Suzanne, I hope that we can do this again, because I you know, there's just we just scratch the surface there's so many um so many more clips that we could talk about with you and um and i want to thank um uh, i want to thank boris uh from questionable personalities uh boris is there with you today we're actually you're at your your home today and uh i know boris is out there uh boris does great interviews uh with you on youtube boris also uh, did your um, did a documentary about you, um, which if anyone has not seen it, please uh, check it out. It's on YouTube. 
Um, well, it's such, a, it's such a shame that uh, the documentary he shot never made the uh, commercial movie theater circuit. Well, but but now anyone can watch it, Suzanne. Uh, on right, you know, right on YouTube, we actually have um, uh, somebody wrote in today that was watching from England, and now people all over the world can see can see that. So so that's a a positive thing. Uh, and um, uh, but, but, it, but since the, but since the original language was English, if it's being shown all over the world, how how are uh, people who speak all these different languages going to understand it? Well, I, I can't speak for all the countries, although English is, is quite well spoken in, in a number of countries. And and uh, yeah, we're just hearing now from uh, Chris C78, uh, uh, take care from England, he's saying. So that's somebody that, you know, is hopefully will watch your documentary and spread the word about your work over there in England. And um, so I I I, uh, I encourage anyone that hasn't yet watched that movie to watch it, and I'm I'm actually appearing. In, I appear in that as well, talking about Suzanne and her her great work. Um, and Suzanne, any uh, closing messages that you have for for your fans out there? Um, I I want to continue performing as long as I can. I'm I'm much I'm much older now, and some movements I excelled in when I was younger, uh, I do them less or, or I can't do them at all anymore. But uh, but I can still uh, do effective uh, interpretive dancing. And you'll always be able to do your showcase posing, no matter what happens, right? Um, yes, I think so. Yes. Well, we'll be uh, we'll be watching along, Suzanne, and watching your work uh, uh, as you continue through these years. And um, thank you again so much for uh, for doing this and uh, participating. And thank you, everyone that watched today. Um, spread the word about uh, our program here, and um, and don't forget to click like and subscribe if you uh, liked it and want to subscribe. And Suzanne, uh, uh, I wish you well, and I hope you have a great, happy Easter. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Take care.